mm, okay. So, um, today I have something very special here that I am quite excited about. Ordered it like maybe two or so weeks ago. Um, so as you can tell, kind of a very nice square shape, very thin. Um, so I have two records in here actually. And yeah, so, but very, very cool stuff. So um, as you can see here, or actually you probably can't because my setup is such shit. Um, it says things up here. So it says something and then 2528 Tulip, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, 19175. So that is where it shipped from. I got them from Discogs. So, um, but yeah, there is some, some very, very cool stuff in here. So yeah, address to me, Forrest Schweitzer, um, and an address that shall be indisclosed. Um, yeah, so, all right, I think it's time to pop these bad boys open. Um, we might have to do some tape ripping. But, yeah. So. It's kind of difficult because this is the first video. Hold on. This is the first video that I've done. And it's just kind of... Like, it's surprisingly difficult to figure out shit to say on camera. I mean, I'm not saying that it's more difficult to say things on camera. It's just, even if, like, you're a very talkative person, like, I would say I'm a, you know, relatively expressive person. Um, it's just hard to talk for the camera anyways um so yeah that's that so we've cut it open right there it's a bit difficult to see but it the deed has been done so looks like okay that's gonna be the best way of opening this wait should i now i want to keep the packaging intact this is i said before Records, I should say, as there are two. And two is more than one. Stay in school, kids. Okay. So, we have a nice little flap business going on here. So that's nice. And... So we got a useless piece of shit right there and uh oh oh it looks like the cd or the the other thing is a cd i guess i thought that it was like a record of some sort but yeah okay so the first and much less exciting of the two is Graham Lambkin and Jason Lescalite. I believe that is how you pronounce that name right there. So these guys, oh, and the album is called Air Supply, which is right there. So these guys are, um, uh, let's see how to describe them. Um, so pretty much I'm really into like noise music. Um, it's something that I have grown my passion for in the past like two or three years and so pretty much what we have here is a really um a really nice kind of modern-ish expression um of a sort of a noise album um so i'm wondering 
wondering, I want to play it for you guys. So let's see here. Okay, seed player, check. That is that. Um, oh, yeah, that's right. And then there's this. Sweet. Okay, so what I have here in terms of setup, hold on, let me put that there. Okay, so I have the Jawbone Bluetooth speaker. Very, very, very nice. I would definitely recommend. Oh, also, I'm going to shut up because it makes this really cool sound when it turns on. Yeah, it's really cool. Just like futuristic and shit, yo. Yeah. Oh, it's so hot. Okay, so I'll plug that into there. And this into here. And open this up. This is just a really shitty old non name brand um, thing in a jig CD player. Discman walk spherical motion device, whatever you prefer. Um, so we have interesting things going on here. Let's see how it looks on the inside. Very nice. Got a little bit of, uh, what was that? Looks to be stylized representations of the band members, I would assume. Yeah, that, that looks to be the deal. Um, anyway, so this album was recorded um, in 2010. So I don't know how familiar you are with uh, sort of the history of noise music, but um, the f you know, actually, I'll get into history a little bit later because I have something that, oh, <laughs> that's funny. Here, let me put this right there. Uh, the on the back where the CD device it says labels. Very nice. So, anyways, I'll get more into the history a little bit later, but let's play. I haven't listened to this before. It was just a recommended album and I did some research into it and it appeared to be something of interest so I decided to purchase it. Um, so it appears to be a little uh, minimalistic kind of lowercase vibe here at the beginning. It's very nice. Yeah, so a big, I'll let you guys listen to it for a little while, but a, a big feature of this, because within noise, so, oh, let me turn the sound a little bit. So there's experimental, right? So that's like the overarching genre. Um, and then contained within experimental is like um, some variants of world music, um, noise, uh, ambient, drone, that kind of stuff. Um, and, and it's all sort of, I mean, when, when they say experimental, it's mainly pertaining to, like, music that's made using um, sort of non-traditional instruments or, um, you know, outside of the microtonal scale or um, just very unpleasant, like, grinding, harsh noises um, and very, very long track times generally. Um, I don't think the track times are too long on here. I don't think it actually says how long they are. But, I mean, you really 
it's kind of an acquired taste because you know to listen to something like this you have to you have to really want it first of all it's not like pop or it just you know it's not easy listening um and then it also lasts a long time usually i mean i i have songs um a band that I discovered a long time ago, one of my favorite experimental bands called Bull of Heaven. Um, you should check them out. They have all their music for free on their website, which is just bullofheaven.com. Um, so, I mean, they have tracks that are literally a year long. Um, they're, they're kind of an extreme sect of, of experimental um, music that kind of likes to focus on... Um, just like very breadthy kind of um, understated music. Uh, it is one way to think about it. It's just very prolonged tracks in which there's not a whole lot of evolution. Um, and one of the ways I like to think about experiment experimental music is it's like pleasure and pain. So, I mean, you, you honestly, you have to want it. You know, you're not gonna have a good time if if you're listening to experimental music and you don't want to be. Um, and it, it just takes you places. Like, it, it really does if you're just very calm and quiet and, you know, have a, a relatively... This is a really nice speaker, by the way. Um, I'm very fortunate to have it. Um, so if you just listen to it for for a long time, and that's usually why most experimental music is made in such large slices, is that, um, they, it, it's, uh, it's just, it's, it's required for, um, for understanding it, because it isn't like pop, rock, rap, country, you know, all the mainstream genres, it isn't like that, in which it just pre presents you information for you to take in. The information is there, but you have to really look for it and extrapolate from it to, to get the most out of it. And a lot of people, um, like, take drugs when they're listening to experimental music just to increase the experience. I personally don't, I've never really needed them. I, I think that I I have a pretty wide sort of like imagination like capacity imaginative capacity and so it's pretty easy for me to, to slip into the grooves most of the time but but we'll listen to this for about 30 seconds um, and so you can see how you feel about it but so this is um this is one of the earliest forms of experimental music back in its heyday in the early 80s um, and late 70s was using non-traditional musical instruments. And I, I don't mean like Indian musical instruments or Japanese musical instruments, just um, like dish pans and um, soap dispensers and uh, saw blades and... Um, you know, just kind of stuff like that and, and making sounds with it. Um, so, yeah, let's just listen to this for a little while.
code right here, they're, um, they're implementing something called binaural frequencies. Um, so there are different frequencies that your brain sort of reads um, through the electromagnetic uh, like spectrum of radiation, one of which is alpha radiation, which is has been proved to have really interesting effects on um, on your brain and the way that you like think, and specifically your capacity to relax. Um, so a lot of times people will play things called binaural beats, um, and it's just supposed to calm you down, make you like turn in on yourself and just, you know, overall have a very like placating effect. Um, it just sort of feels like it's reverberating through your skull. I mean, not, not like it's so loud that it hurts, um, but just you can feel it vibrating in your eardrums and sort of filling up your your um your brain Well, so I think you have, like, a pretty good feeling for this. Um, just because the video is getting kind of long, I want to move on to the big surprise. Um, but, yeah. Or, wait. Yeah, so that is pretty much that. Let's stop it. So once again, for anybody interested, that is Air Supply by Graham Lampkin and Jason Lescalit. They're pretty renowned um, uh, musicians in the experimental and specifically noise field. Um, and, and they've been producing for a while. So definitely I would check this out. It was kind of expensive because um, generally with experimental music, it's kind of the music of extremes, which you would expect it to be, but with price, either it's completely free or just like piss cheap, um, or really expensive. Um, and generally that's because some of it is just really, really hard to come by. Like this is, you're not going to go to Target and pick this up. You're not going to go to you know, Walmart or Best Buy and pick this up. You're not going to go to your local record store and, and pick this up. So, um, yeah, so very good. I will say there's a lot of just supremely shitty experimental music out there, but I think this is definitely um, one of the more palatable ones. So, oh, yeah. And it makes a really cool noise when you turn it off, so I'm gonna do that. Yeah. So that's that. Okay, so now for the big deal. Okay. So. So this probably means absolutely nothing to the vast majority of people who are going to watch or might watch this video. Um, so this is music of Group Ongaku by Group Ongaku. Um, 
So, Groupon Gaku is widely considered to be um, the one, or one of the first um, sort of noise experimental bands ever. Um, this was recorded 1960. Um, so, it, I mean, that's before the Beatles released their first album. You know, I mean, that that's that's kind of radical to think about just because, you know, that that just totally wasn't on the spectrum. So, yeah, so I will try to perform some of the um, uh, some of the or pronounce some of the names on here. So um, this is like heavy um, noise. So this is going to be. Um, mainly composed of just random instruments, so, uh, dishes, pots and pans, uh, tape, um, you know, just a anything you can imagine, really. Um, so there are, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six members, um, okay, so there is... Takehisa Kosugi, who plays the violin, the saxophone, and the tape. Um, uh, Chieko Shiomi, who plays piano. Mikio Tojima, who plays the cello. Uh, Yasunao Tone, who plays uh, the sax and the tape. Um, Janichi Tsuge, who plays guitar. And... Shokuo Mizuno, who plays cello, drums, and tape. Um, and honestly, of all those names, the most important one was not mentioned. So the, the big, like, cheese of this whole operation is Takako Okamato. So he's the editor and the producer for this album. Um, and it's, it's just insane. I mean, like... You talk about forward thinking, you know, it's, it's just, it's radical. Um, so this is new. Um, it, it's not like an original pressing or anything. Um, because I didn't want to spend hundreds of dollars, which is what an original pressing of this would be. Honestly, a test press of this album could probably go for a thousand dollars, um, just because it's it's so niche, you know. There's there's bound to be someone out there who's just so into experimental music that they're gonna pay that. I I am not, even though I am very much into experimental music. So let's get this off. And obviously, as you can see, it's very you know minimalistic, which is kind of what you would expect from an experimental noise band. Um, yeah, so, okay, so the packaging itself is very minimal, it feels, you know, very papery, it doesn't have any gloss or anything on it, um, yeah, so let's pop it open. Okay. All right. So there, there are three songs on this record. Um, there is Automatism, which is a 26 minute long song. Um, and then Object, which is a seven minute long song, uh, both recorded in 1960 um, at the house of Mizuno, who, um, Shikuo Mizuno, uh, plays the cello drums and, and the tape. So um, that takes up side A. And then side B is Metaplasm 9 through 15. Um, I, I don't know what the 9 through 15 stands for. It, it's there There isn't anything that comes before it or after. So I don't know why it's 9 through 15. Um, and was recorded 1961. And it, there are two parts to it. The first part is 14 minutes. The second part is 11 minutes. So, 
Um, yeah, so let's give her a listen. So actually, let's check out the record first. Ooh, very nice. Thick. Very, very well pressed. All right. Okay, let me... Okay, so the way we are going to do this is we are going to play it and listen. So let's do it. So, yeah, so that was a little bit of automatism. So, as um, I'm sure you heard, that was very different from the first um, album that we listened to. So, that album, um, Music of Group Ongaku, uh, is, it's just, it's beautiful. It really is. I mean, it, it's like, it, for me, it's kind of the, the creme de la creme of, um, of experimental music. It's just, it's, it's perfect. Like, um, it, it just seems to seek and fulfill every goal that, um, an experimental music album might, uh, seek to fill. You know, it's complex. It's obviously very experimental. Um, it... And the thing is, it isn't presumptuous or um, grandstanding. And I, I know it sounds kind of ridiculous to even consider a piece of music like that as possibly being that way. But um, I think there's a lot of music produced that is... Uh, just very um, difficult um, to there's a lot of music out there that sets out to do something and does not quite do it a lot of experimental music is like that um, oh oops. but I don't know. I think Group on Gaku pulled it off. So, yeah, this has been great. Nice 30-minute uh, little uh, do here. So, yeah.
Music of Gurbangaku. I definitely recommend.